Hi, I'm David, David Pico from the Departamento de Sistemas Informáticos y Computación. This unit, uh, in, in this unit, we are going to talk about website design and, in particular, how the principle of uh, proximity, uh, a principle of perception that comes from the Gestalt psychology, uh, how this principle can be useful to understand some ideas, some basic ideas of web design. Okay. Uh, first, let's see what the proximity principle be, uh, means. Here, this is a, a, a configuration in which there are no groups. This is a, a neutral configuration, let's say. What happens when we introduce differences in distance between the different elements? Okay, if we do this, uh, we have a proximity effect. And this means that everyone here perceives three groups of, of circles, which are one column, one column, one column. There are three columns uh, made of two different colors of circles. Everyone would see that and probably no one will, will understand this image as, for example, six different lines in which you have two, 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 two. And you, you don't see six different lines, you mainly see three columns. Okay, this is the, the proximity effect. That means that when there are different relationships in distance, we perceive groups immediately. We see the groups. Okay? No one here would say that there really is a column. There's not a real column. There's no line drawn. I mean, the, the difference between this image and this one is, is, is very little, but we perceive a, a, a big difference in the perception. Okay, the applications of this principle uh, to web design are, are many, and here we're going to see just a few examples. Uh, okay, the idea is uh, that using proximity in a website, uh, grouping and making elements, grouping elements and making them uh, be separate from one another, then uh, we can define different blocks of contents. The, the visual perception will have an influence on the contents, and the contents should have an influence on the visual perception. Uh, in this sense, the visual distance and the semantic distance are uh, related, as we will see. We're going to see some examples now. And also we will see how to define complex groupings, complex uh, groups with sub subgroups uh, using uh, proximity. Okay, this is uh, our first example. Here, imagine that these are texts. For example, here we have a a title, this would be the, uh, like a good design. We have a big title that represents uh, that this is the title for everything that we have below. And then we have two, two paragraphs, which are these two big uh, rectangles. And these two paragraphs have a subtitle here. Okay? In this example, we can see perfectly how this is distributed. And we can see the hierarchy of the text. Even though we cannot read the text, we can see in, in a first, uh, if we take a look fast, fast uh, to it, we can see how the information is uh, organized. See that here there are three different distances that are being applied. There is a short distance between this element and this element. There is a longer distance between this element and this here. So there is a distance between, which is the same here and here. There is another distance, which is this one, which is a bit longer. And this, there is a longer distance, which is this one here. Three, this, three distances define three types of relationships between the elements. Semantic relationships. What happens if we don't respect that? Okay, here, in this third example, I just used the same distance for everything. Okay. You can see this very often in websites, that the designer didn't care about, about the distances in texts. This makes thing, uh, the text much more difficult to understand. Here you don't have a clear idea that this title is the title of everything. You may think that this is uh, the title for this, the first paragraph, and you really don't know what happens with the second one, for example. And in this case, I'm using a uh, misleading use of the of the distances and see that this is this can be confusing because here you may think that this subtitle is a subtitle of this title but it's 
nothing to do with this paragraph. And here you may think that this subtitle is related to the first paragraph instead of the second one. So uh, this layout would be probably quite confusing for a reader. In case, I mean, of all the time, in case that the real, I mean, that, that this is the title of everything, etc. So, if this title applies to everything with this layout, that is not easily understood. That's what I mean. Okay, a second example is something that happens very often in websites with menus. Here we have an example of a menu with nine elements, and nine elements are usually a lot. Okay, you may have that, okay? but usually something that happens very often, and it happens in this example, uh, all these elements are not uh, absolutely independent. They have some relationships. For example, in this example, uh, there are, you have T1, T2, T3, T4. These four elements have some relationship somehow. Then we have P1, P2, P3 that have also some relationship between them. And then we have R1, R2. Okay. If this is the case, there is a much better way of designing this website because you can use the proximity principle to express that. And you can have just put a slight white space here, a narrow white space here and white space here, and then you will help your reader understand this menu much better because you can see the relationships. Here you clearly see three groups and there are some sections within them. This can be even more complex because you can imagine, for example, imagine that the, the T block and the P block are different but they have some relationship and the the, the last block, the R, R1, R2, you know that it's totally different to the other two. You can also express that doing something like that. Here you have a menu in which, uh, in which the reader can see that there are two blocks which are different but have some connection somehow and there is another block with two options which is totally different. That will help the user very much in understanding what is going on. Another example is the visual hierarchy uh, in which the, the layout is giving you a lot of information of how different things relate to each other. Let's see this example. This is a very simple example, a schematic example, of um, a typical uh, layout for a website. Here you have some region with some kind of logo. We have a region like this with some menu, some contents here. And we have another menu here, okay? So this is um, one possibility. And see what happens when I change the space a little bit. And I do this. The elements are the same, but the perception is, is very, very different. Here and here. Okay, what's the difference? Let's see uh, the first example in more detail. In the first example, the user will usually see one area here, which I've called zone A, and a second area, uh, which I called zone B, here on the right. And, the, for example, in zone B, you can perceive two different subzones, B1, B2. Okay, this means that, for example, this has some consequences. Uh, if I put a link here on this menu, Everyone would expect that if I click there, all this area can change. That would be uh, an expected behavior. And if I click on menu one, I would expect that the contents may change. But I would not expect, if I click on, on menu one here somewhere, I would not expect this area to change. Because I understood visually that this is a sub somehow this is uh, hierarchically is below all this, all this uh, area here. In the other example, just with a few changes in space, visually you perceive something totally different. And here we have a zone here A and zone B below with two different zones. And here it works the other way around. If I click on menu 1, I would expect menu 2 to change and contents to change. That would be uh, something natural. But if I click on menu 2, I would not expect menu 1 to change. 
because I would only expect this part to change. And see that here I draw perfect uh, rectangles, okay, and, and it's clear and easy to see, but very often these areas are something that you perceive visually for different reasons, because you have different colors, because some texts are, are close or s separated. Okay? It's just a matter of how you uh, change very often a couple of pixels in distance make that di visual difference. So you have to be sensible to how that is perceived. Okay? Of course, that's important because if you, if you do put a, a, a link here that changes the upper part, in this case, you, your, your users will have a confusing experience. They will, they will be confused. Okay, so as a summary, um, the principle of perception helps us talk about defining blocks of content and how proximity helps us defining blocks of, of visual blocks that, under, that the user understands as, as uh, blocks of content of, 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 of uh, the semantics uh, inside. Uh, we can also see how the distance is translated somehow between visual distance, there is a translation into semantic distance, as we saw with the text. The different distances in the text are translated to semantic relationships. And uh, we've also seen how to define complex groupings, as we did with the menus. Uh, the I, last point is that, of course, the proximity principle is also necessary in order to define visual comfort. One of the most important things in making, in making a, a nice to see, a nice looking website is using margins and white space because that uh, avoids uh, visual overload. Uh, you don't want the, the page to be too crowded with things. You need uh, white space and also uh, you need, if you want to, some element to stand out, you usually want to put white space uh, as the background. So there's some white space and then the element can be seen. So there, is a, there are different uses of, of distances in, in web designs. But so far, what we wanted to say today. Thank you very much for your attention.